if it's going to be a difficult dialogue between us, it's not going to be helpful for you. Do you understand? Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times people clapped back at Judge Judy. Stop playing with the papers. There are more papers there than in the Supreme Court. <laughs> He's got a long history, Your Honor, sorry. Uh, this is gonna be very short. Trust me. For this list, we'll be looking at litigants who dared to talk back to the famously fierce judge on the reality court show. Do you think any of these clapbacks were justified? Argue your case in the comments. Number 10. Don't dispute the judge's questions. Fewer things raise alarm bells faster than a litigant refusing to answer the judge's questions. In this case, the plaintiff, who allegedly stayed with the defendant while completing work on his home, argues that she was wrongly evicted. Don't try to double talk me. Were you ever paid by Mr. Smith for work that you or crews hired by you did on his house? However, she's reluctant to actually state any facts, averts eye contact, and ruffles through documents instead. Her argument has less foundation than the house she supposedly worked on, leading the judge to question her disability benefits. Now tell me why your disability benefits were cut off last year. That has nothing to do with this case. Oh, it has everything to do with this case. It takes a lot of guts or just plain stupidity to try and school the judge about legal proceedings. Plus, the plaintiff's cackle as her case gets dismissed is equally ridiculous. You may be hustling for a long time, Ms. Smith, but you don't hustle me. You don't hustle me. You don't answer my questions, your case is dismissed. Number nine, we're done. A surefire way to ensure your case gets dismissed is by talking back to the judge. This case about a car was crazy enough, with both litigants clearly unprepared to face the fearsome Judge Judy. What's wrong with you? It doesn't make sense. Is there something sense. wrong with you? It doesn't make sense to me. It, it doesn't make sense. Because I had the car for a month. It was no longer my car. And if you were notified, they told you it was your car. Was the plaintiff struggles to listen while the judge explains what she did wrong. Her numerous attempts to interrupt are hilarious, but she probably should have just stayed silent since she only contradicts herself. He does this for a living. This is the first time I've ever sold a car. So I asked you him, is say, there anything I me, need? Just a second. You didn't tell me that you sold the car. You said that you traded cars. Well, we traded cars. Her attempts to argue back fall upon deaf ears, and even her look of disgust doesn't get the judge riled up even a smidge. We're all for litigants clapping back, but this one just fell flat. Goodbye, we're done. Why is our excuse when they step out? Number eight, silence is golden. Just a piece of advice. Don't take out your frustrations on the person presiding over your case. Mr. Gouchard, you want to get to the facts, and I said it to you before, you go to a therapist. You want to get to the law, you come to court. I'm not talking about my personality. I'm you talking about You are talking facts. about your personality, sir. We're not sure what the plaintiff thought would happen when he entered Judge Judy's court, but he's frustrated and wants everyone to know. His overwhelming rage clouds his judgment, and he consistently mouths off, much to the judge's annoyance. No, Is the order that I just read hurting you? No, ma'am. Sometimes it's good just to be quiet. Now you'll have to give me the new order. It says the same thing. <laughs> but it's just what we recently threw experts all, all I'm telling you is sometimes silence is golden. If he'd heeded her advice and stopped talking, he actually would have won. After all, he'd given her all the proof she needed to rule in his favor. Instead, he shoots himself in the foot, leaving her with no choice but to dismiss his claim. You are so angry and need a forum for your anger. Correct. So badly. This is not it, Mr. Gouchard, and I understand you're angry. Unfortunately, sir, you picked the wrong forum. Your case is dismissed, that's all. Number seven, a heated debate. This case was a little different as it sparked a debate about legalizing certain substances. The defendants argue that people need drugs to deal with an unjust society. The economy's in the toilet. We've got a problem here with the people in charge of this country totally controlling the so money. So please, stop the with drug the dealer. excuse. You're saying the abuse excuse Your again. Fault. Society is abusing all these people, which is why they're using drugs. Well, One of their witnesses, an ex-dealer, says that he'd do anything to make money and doesn't care what happens after. It's clear that there are many vehement voices concerning this matter, and everyone wants their opinion heard. In Europe, are you they legalize Let me explain drugs something to you. Scum who sell drugs, sell it because it's a fast buck. A court case isn't often open for discussion, but listening to everyone's impassioned arguments is particularly captivating. However, no matter how much they argue back, nothing can penetrate the judge's no-tolerance approach to selling substances. I believe that drug dealers should be lined up 
not, a, not housed at public expense, in stocks throughout the country so that people will see that they will not profit. Number six, what is rocket science? You know those moments that have you groaning out loud and rubbing your temples? Yep, this is one of those. The plaintiff wants reimbursement after her friend jokingly pushed her into a pool while she was holding her iPhone. Well, I mean, it was the atmosphere of the party. We were all pushing each other in. She didn't push anybody in. No. Grow up. You make a mistake, that's what you have to do. You don't need to be a judge to suss out the most logical solution. Or as Judge Judy says, it's not rocket science. She then asks what rocket science is, to which the defendant responds, Rocket science is when the scientists find out things about space. When the whole court bursts out laughing, she meekly tries to backtrack. It just goes to show that sometimes it's best to say nothing. Well, you felt awful, that means you pay for it if you feel awful. Number five, but does he want his TV back? In this preposterous discord between ex-partners, Judge Judy finds herself going head-to-head -head with an incessantly hard-headed litigant. She asks him if he wants his TV back, but something tells us that this was never about the television in the first place. No, I want what it's worth. You can't have that. That's denied. I don't think that's... I don't care what you think. Rather than answer the judge's pretty straightforward question, he argues back or poses questions of his own. Once that matter is settled, the whole argument starts again over a computer. Because if you were so angry about your computer, you would have stopped sleeping with her in February. Well, I cared about in her February. at that time. In February. He's clearly come to court assured that the judge would rule in his favor. So when that doesn't happen, he refuses to go down without a fight. Fortunately, he's no match for Judge Judy. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're oh, saying. Good. But good. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I don't care what you are saying. Number four, whose episode is it anyway? You should never try and outsass the judge unless you want to live in infamy on the internet. While speaking to the defendant, she learns that he's fathered 10 children from about four different women, whatever that means. Perhaps if he stayed in school a little longer instead of and stayed out of the bedroom, you'd understand better. He then tries to appropriately joke that one of those women is Scheindlin's daughter. As you can imagine, that does not go over too well with the no-nonsense judge. When she calls him out, he has an even snarkier response. I'm this might be joke. your show, but I'm, this is my episode. I'm, I'm, no, 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 no. You don't have, sh listen to me, you don't have you don't have an episode. He got off relatively unscathed, given Judy's typical wrath, if you ask us. That doesn't mean he leaves in one piece either, which he probably deserved. You became responsible. Judgment no. for the plaintiff in the amount of $411.17. Step out. Number three, losers. To be honest, the defendant's attitude here is so perplexing that it's almost hard to believe that this is an actual Judge Judy episode. We were almost expecting dancing lobsters to enter at the end. It's that ridiculous. I was whipped with a belt by this boy. I was spit in my face. She just makes it seem like she, it's all about her. I asked them to leave, take their baloney elsewhere. The defendant, until now, hasn't exactly proven to be the sharpest tool in the toolbox. When the judge asks her why she cursed at the plaintiff and his friends, her answer just tips us over the edge. Because they're losers. Oh. Do you get it? Do you get it? The best part is the look of shock on the defendant's faces when things don't go their way. Well, you know what they say, you win some, you losered some. You can take his poor four grand because she doesn't work and go friggin' have fun with it. This was his day. Number two, the judge hears all. Just a little lesson in courtroom 101, the judge's say is final. And some extra advice for anyone seeking Judy justice, this judge hears everything. Do we understand each yes, other? Honor. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. In this case, the defendant digs himself into a hole when he audibly rejects her ruling about a dog. Do you understand? You are not getting anything. Do you understand? Yes. Perfect. Yes, We're done. Thank you. He probably thought he'd outsmarted her by muttering his indignation under his breath, but we guess he forgot he was mic'd up. The judge heard him, the plaintiff heard him, the whole court heard him, and we most definitely heard him. It's one of those moments where seeing the judge turn on beast mode is incredibly gratifying. She placed him under her metaphorical gavel and came down hard. You abide by my decision. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, don't push back, just push off. 
Judy has very little patience for disrespectful or aggressive litigants. Listen to me, because he has a big mouth, I'm awarding you a judgment against him for $450. Now you can take your blue shirt and go outside and I'll deal with the rest of them. In this case about gun ownership, a member of the defendant's party gets kicked out for mouthing off. His buddy reacts with a pretty ominous statement directed at Shindlin. Better watch him. Aggressive and you nasty. You know what people do these days. A nasty. Well, aggressive and nasty. She orders him ejected as well, but in an attempt to have the final word, he suggests that one should take a test to become a judge. Perhaps his smart mouth would have more impact if he, A, was familiar with the State Bar Association, and B, knew how to open a door. You, you, push. Out. His second attempt at firing back gets drowned out by the sound of the audience's laughter. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.